I got, I got to tell you, the, the parsha of Etchanan, I, I know that you know this, Etchanan, this, the, 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 our second Torah portion in the book of Devarim, is exquisite. Mo, again, Moshe, that person who, that man of God who was shy about speaking publicly, he is just a, a fountain of the, of the most beautiful praise of Hashem and everything that he's saying here. And he says, I implored Hashem at that time, He's talking about when Hashem first made the decree on him that he can't enter into the land. And he says, Va'et Hanan. Uh, uh, the root of that word is, 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 uh, is, uh, to, is to plea. It's a compassionate plea. And it's, an, it's, an, it's a request for grace. I implored Hashem at that time saying, Hashem Elohim, you have begun to show your servants your greatness and your strong hand. For what power is there in the heaven and on the earth that can perform according to your deeds and according to your mighty acts? Hashem told him, He's speaking about when Hashem told him back in Parshat Chukat in the book of Numbers that he will not be going to the land because of what happened at the, at the, the water. So Moshe is explaining, I prayed to Hashem and I begged him, let me go in. And so first of all, as you know, this word Va'et Hanan has a numerical equivalent of what? 515. Five, 515, yeah. right? So there is a concept that the Holy Ramchal and other great Kabbalists talk about that Moshe Rabbeinu prayed 515 prayers. 515 prayers to be able to come to Israel. Mm -hmm. All different and all expressing his heart and all the reasons that he wanted to come. And, and Chazal, our sages tell us famously that if he would have prayed one more prayer, that would have been a, that, like the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back and Hashem wouldn't have been able to refuse. And so that's why it says in, in verse 26, but Hashem became angry with me because of you when he did not listen to me. And Hashem said, it's too much for you. Do not continue to speak to me further about this matter. Meaning don't, don't do the one more prayer, right? So he so badly wanted to come in, right? Here's one of my favorite books, right? This is a, a very holy Kabbalistic work. It's called Megale Amukot, which means the, the revelation of, of hidden things. And it's written by one Rav Natan, Natan Nata Shapiro, who was the chief rabbi of um, Krakow. Ah, uh, Poland. Um, yeah. po yes, Krakow. And I think it was the 1500s. And this book is called 252 Explanations on Parshat Ve'etchanan, right? That's what the book is called. But the entire book from start to finish is 252 reasons, secret reasons, why Moshe wanted to come into Israel. None of them had anything to do with him. It had nothing Absolutely. to do with him. Absolutely. People read None, none I, of it had anything to do with him. For years I read this rabbi and I thought, I don't blame him. You know, he really, really wants to, to go in there and all that. And then the he more He wants that to we do study, the mud bath in Eilat, right? He wants yeah. to do the, the Dead Sea float. Yeah. He wants to do the hotels. No. Yeah. No. He, 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 the, this is remarkable. And, you know, the, the key to this is you know that it's, it's, it's in his heart is for the nation of Israel. It has yes. nothing to do with it. Because what th this hit me the other night is that he is so in tune with the will of Hashem that Hashem said, okay, you speak now. I mean, that's remarkable when you think about it. And, and it's because he saw, of course, Hashem sees our hearts. And he knew that, he knew that it was, it, there was nothing selfish in this constant prayer, this 515 prayers. I'm telling you, that, and, and this, this whole holy book, it's so holy, it's all insights into the tikkunim, the cosmic rectifications that Moshe wanted to do, for, not for his own sake. That's why he begged Hashem to be able to come into the land. So he says here, you know, I, I, was, I implored Hashem, and he said, when, what did he say? He said to Hashem, let me now cross and see the good land that is on the other side of the Jordan, this good mountain and the Lebanon. Yeah. And so Rashi tells us famously, what is, it, what is he talking about here? He says, let me see the good mountain and the Lebanon. The good mountain is Jerusalem, is an allusion to Jerusalem, and the Lebanon is an allusion to the temple, the holy yeah. temple. Let me see Jerusalem and the holy temple built because the root of Lebanon, and it's a word that also appears in the Song of Songs, the root of Lebanon is Lavan, white. white. Yeah, yeah. So Chazal say, what is, the, what is the allusion? The holy temple is called Lebanon, it's called Lebanon because it whitens the sins of Israel. It's a whitening, a lightening agent. What does that mean? Does it mean simply the idea that the offerings are brought there and therefore it's a whole system of atonement? 
the best way that I ever that I ever saw someone explain the concept of atonement is breaking it up into the words at one mint, right? The idea is it's about, what goes on in the temple is about fixing man. It's about realigning his brain and putting his awareness of God at the center. Because everything, everything, everything is awareness of God. That's what Moshe says twice in this Parsha, that there is none other.